excited to be with you today. Um, today's an opportunity for me to uh, bring to you a message that's entitled A New Way. And if you missed the first Sunday um, in January of 2021, this was actually the message I shared that morning. Uh, we had a little bit of a technical glitch, and so I'm posting this again as a kind of a re-record. So I'm going to hit the main points of this message. It won't be as long as a, as a sermon that day might have been. So hang with me. Um, and for those of you that have already seen it, watch it again. Um, I think it's just a good reminder of what we're going to be about this year and what we hope to accomplish. So probably like me, you got a few things this past Christmas that were brand new. Um, you know, it's like opening up a box and you got a new pair of shoes or maybe you got a, some kind of new electronic device. Um, that's always fun to get something that's new. And some of us like things that are more traditional and there's nothing wrong with opening up something and getting it that's vintage and yet it's still kind of new in a way. But this year, um, we have been working as a staff just to get ready for 2021. And one of the big things that we started asking was, God, what, what's the next year going to look like? And so much of us wanted to leave 2020 in the rearview mirror. We just wanted to forget about it. And I get that. Um, but with that comes a change. It comes something new that we're kind of welcoming. Um, and yet a lot like this jar that's right here behind me, if this jar behind me represented a jar of change for you and for me, would that be something you would be excited about? I mean, that jar, all those marbles, each one of them, if you pulled them out, it's like, oh yeah, I mean, I got that much change coming in front of me. Some of us would get really pumped about that. And then others of us would look at that jar and go, no way, I could handle a few of it, but I can't handle all of it. And I get that. And yet this next year, I want to challenge you to what is something new that you would like to see done in your life? I mean, I look at my life and sometimes I look at the lives of people around me and I, I notice that we get to the beginning of January and we want to change the way we look. We want to lose a little bit of weight. We want to kill that habit that we developed. Um, we want to start a new one. We want to just do something that's going to make a difference in our life. And I hope that's what this year looks like for you. And that's what we hope happens in the life of our church as well. So a few months ago, when we started looking at the new year and planning calendar and planning goals and really thinking about it, God began to lay on our hearts as a staff here at the church that we wanted to talk about what was it going to look like if God could do something new in and through us. And a verse just kept coming to mind for us, and it was in Isaiah. And I want to read that to you here this morning. This is Isaiah 43, 19, by the way. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness, in streams, in the wasteland. That verse is just packed with so many great things that we're going to be looking at. But when you start to think about change and doing something new, I know it gets like, God, what do you want me to change? And how do we even determine that? And then, God, if I know what I want to change, am I going to have the power and the strength to be able to do it? And how are you going to help me? And so those are going to be some steps that I'm going to lay out at the end of this message. But right now, I want us just to go back to that verse in Isaiah 43, 19. I'm going to read that to you one more time, and I want to explain a few things about it. And then I want us to talk about the vision for James Island Baptist for this year and what a new way looks like in your life, in my life, and in the life of the church. So Isaiah 43, 19, why don't you just read it with me? If you've got it on your phone or, or whatever, um, you may even um, just have it memorized. It might be an important verse to you, but let's go through it. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness, in streams, in the wasteland. Now what's real important about the book of Isaiah is this. It's a, a time in the life of the Israelites where Isaiah was a prophet, and Isaiah was to deliver a message to the people of negative that was going to be coming their direction. They were going to be facing countries that were going to come and oppress them and take over, the Babylonians, the Assyrians. Um, so many different groups were just going to come in and dominate their lives. A lot like we've seen dominations of COVID and other things that have come across our plate in 2020. And on the other hand of that was a message of hope and of grace and of forgiveness, because here's what would happen in the life of the Israelites, just like you and I. They would follow God, they would do the right thing, and then they'd mess up. 
And then God would need to get their attention and to get them back on the right track again. And a lot of times that may mean just God allowing life to happen with the consequences that came their way for disobedience. Well, then after that, God was still saying, but that's not where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to bring you hope. I'm going to bring you joy. I'm going to bring you a path, but I need you to focus because I'm the one that's going to do it. You're not going to create it for yourself. I am doing a new thing, God says. And then he raised that question, do you perceive it? Do you even see it? Because that's the part where you and I have got to get tuned into God. And we want to help you as a church and as your staff to equip you to do that. And so that's why we've created that discipleship path going full circle. We've preached on it for the last few months and really wanted you to gain that insight of how do I step in and become that person that God wants me to be, to grow closer to him, to be the disciple maker that God wants me to be. And then we really talked about how that we wanted this vision to be something that we could carry throughout the year that would just incite us every month to just seek and to find that new thing that God wants us to do in our life. And so here's where I want to, um, I guess, just kind of share with you. You've seen it in brochure format, um, laying around in the chairs that you've you've picked it up at Christmas Eve, maybe. Um, we've got it in different places. I'm going to be sharing it with you in, in an email that's going to be coming here in the next week. And you're going to be able to read through all of these steps of what we're looking for for this next year and God doing a new way and a new thing. Now, the last part of that verse in Isaiah said, God asked the question, he said, do you perceive it? And then he said, I'm making a way. I am making a way in the wilderness. I am I am causing something to spring forth in your midst. And do you see it? And so here's what we're going to be doing. In the month of January, we are just asking God, to show that to us. We're just going to put ourselves out there. We're going to humble ourselves before God. We're going to seek his face. We're going to repent from things that we shouldn't be doing. We're going to develop new habits of seeking him. And through that, we are asking God as well as a church for him to show us what that new thing is, that new way in the life of James Island Baptist, in our groups, in our mission opportunities, and also in our lives individually. In the month of February, we've got um, an exciting theme of loving a new way. And then in March, we're talking about doing missions in a new way. I'm going to fast forward on down to the summer. And we start to look at June, July, and August. And we're, we're talking about doing family in a new way. And I want you even just to think about that right now. How can you, your, your spouse, your kids, um, others that you live with, maybe even those that you consider family that are just close around you, And what can y'all do this summer that would look different? Um, Maybe you try not to do all the traditional things you always do, or maybe you take that traditional vacation um, spot that you go to, and maybe you work in a new way of seeking God that month or that week at that event. And so family in a new way. And then we move on in September, we're talking about giving in a new way. Um, October, worshiping in a new way. And then in November, I can't wait because we're going to be collecting all the stories and um, documenting all the things that God does in our life this year. And in November, we're going to come back and we're just going to thank God. We're just going to celebrate every little new way that he developed in our lives as a church family um, and what he did to continue that story of discipleship that he started with his disciples so long ago when he gave those basic commands to them to go and to make disciples and to tell people and to share the love of Christ with others. And so that's really what I'm I'm hoping to see us be able to do this coming year is to see this new thing that God's going to be doing in our lives. But before we can get there, I know that some of you may have some questions or you may need just a little bit of guidance on, on how do you step into this. And so I thought through that and I thought, here's some things that are important verses and steps that you and I need to follow as we get started this year. First of all, We need to learn to connect God's word and to obey him in a new way. James 1.22 tells us, don't just listen to the word, but what? Do what it says. We need to act on it. And so if today all you do is hear this message um, and then you step away from it and you don't do anything with it and you don't open yourselves up to praying and asking God to do a new thing in you, then it's for nothing. 
And so seek God's word, and then whatever he begins to show you, begin to act on it. The second thing, we've got to connect to our groups. Um, It's not just a thing to try to get more groups or just to have more people in a group. Honestly, the reason we stress connection groups is because it's the vehicle for what we use here at the church to help grow individuals, to help them become the disciple makers that they need to be, and to accomplish missions and achieve our purpose as a church. And so let me share a few verses with you that are super important here. Hebrews 10, 25 tells us, don't neglect the meeting with each other. You've got to keep doing it. Romans 12 begins to spell out how they were all parts of God's body in different ways. And when we gather and we come together, we're whole and we can accomplish things that we would never accomplish on our own. Matthew 18, 20 says that when we gather and come together, God is in our midst. And so we want to invite God to just to come and to be with us. And so I'm inviting you, if you are not a part of a connection group, you need to get in one. You need to be a part of one this coming year. If you haven't been connecting with your group because of COVID and maybe you just didn't like the idea of Zoom um, or or doing something like even in a hybrid format of in-person and Zoom, ask you to put those hurdles away. Get invested in a group. We've got new groups that are starting even this month. And so I want you to tune into those and become a part of one. We've got to connect third of all to a common vision. Now we're already a purpose-driven church. We teach on that. We talk about it. Tom had a great sermon um, at the end of the year that really kind of nailed that down and what that discipleship path looks like for us. We want to help you to share, connect, minister, and disciple All of those things are fully spelled out on our website and that path. None of that has changed. This vision, A New Way, is just for 2021. And we're asking you to take it and to wrap it into that. And God says in Colossians 1.16, for everything, absolutely everything, above, below, visible, invisible, wherever it might be, everything gets its start in Him. Its purpose is found in Him. And so we want to stay on that common vision and that common path together of achieving and seeing what God wants to do in our lives in a new way. And we're just going to continue those stories and continue to share those things. The next part is that we've got to learn to connect to our community. That's what we're called to do. We could keep it inside these doors and we could change personally on a couple of levels, but Really what's exciting about this vision this coming year, and every month is going to spin out of that theme, even with February, loving in a new way. It's going to take us outdoors. It's going to take us to our community. It's going to take us to our workplace. It's going to take us to our neighborhoods, and we're going to be able to invest and to connect in our community. Even an exciting hashtag, ji for you it's a campaign that's going to go all year long, is going to ask us to stretch into our community and do random acts of kindness and to do things that are going to be pivotal to living this vision out for 2021. Here's the last part, and I know it's probably the hardest part, but it's the part where you're going to say, I'm committing. I'm going to say yes to following through on this verse in Isaiah, and I'm going to perceive what God's doing new in my life. And I'm going to do these steps of getting connected to God's word on a daily basis. I'm going to get connected to a group. I'm going to be connected to my community and to the vision for this church. And yes, God, I'm going to say yes when you ask me to do something new. Even though it might mean a change that's a little bit challenging for me, I'm going to say yes. And I can't wait to see what God's going to do in my life. Right now at this point, I want to just lead us in a prayer. Um, Some of you may be watching this video for the first time. You're clicking on our website and you've, you've been following this or you saw it through social media and you're like, wow, I, I need to just even give my life to Christ. Like that commitment starts right then and there. And so I hope that you would do that. If you've got questions about how to begin to start that story of a relationship with Christ, we want to help you to do that. And so right now, I want to just lead all of us, though, in a prayer of commitment to follow through on this vision for 2021. Would you pray with me? God, we love you, and we thank you that you've given us this vision. It's specific to us, to our church, to our community, and to the life of this church. And 
it means that we are going to seek your face. God, we pray that you would just help us to perceive that new thing that you're doing. We're not causing it. We're not creating it, but it's something new that you're doing. And so, God, I pray that each and every person that's watching, no matter where they're at in their walk with you, maybe right now they just need to say, Jesus, I want to ask you into my heart. Forgive me of my sin and come into my life. I want to follow you. You can be the Lord of my life. And then others of us might be at that next stage of, God, I need to start by committing to a connection group. Would you show me a group that you have designed me to be in? And then maybe some of us are at that point that we're ready to take that next step. And I'm going to step up and, and I'm going to start doing things I've never done before. I'm going to serve. I'm going to be in mission projects. I'm going to live this out just daily. God, when you tell me to do something, I'm going to do it. And finally, God, maybe some of us are at the point that we need to just start equipping someone else. We need to start discipling another believer and start walking alongside them. I pray whatever that new thing is for each and every one of us, God, that you would make it real, but God, that you would show us a clear path and that you would give us the ability to stand strong and to follow through. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, the story continues. I said earlier that Jesus started the story with his disciples. I can't wait to hear your stories all year long. In fact, I hope you'll share them with me. As we go along, we're going to begin to share these in the life of the church. We're going to share them in the worship center. We're going to share them by video on our website. And I hope that this new way, these things that God's going to be doing, that it just creates a movement that's going to be exciting in the life of our church. Thanks again for tuning in today. I appreciate you listening in. And I hope that you'll share this message with other people that need to hear it. Have a great day. Mm-hmm.